Why is this trial important? Why should Canadians care about what's going on here in Lethbridge, Alberta? Because it affects all of us. It's all of our freedoms. It's our right and freedoms. It's, it's lawful in Canada to protest against, against government mandates and government tyranny. And those men did nothing wrong. Just like, just like 60,000, 100,000, 200,000 Canadians that stood for our rights and freedoms. Uh, we have to stand for what's right. We have to stand for what we believe in. Otherwise, we'll lose our rights and freedoms. An RCMP officer, Constable Daniel Sauve, was the focus of today's proceedings in the trial for Chris Carbert and Anthony Olenek here in Lethbridge, Alberta. He was in Coos operating as a sort of evidentiary exhibit officer. He was sent there as part of a team to execute a search warrant upon two trailers and a modular home that the Crown is linking to the two defendants. Robert Krejcik reporting for Rebel News. Chris Carbert and Anthony Olenek are both charged with conspiracy to murder. The two men are being accused by the Crown of conspiring to murder police officers during their participation in the Coots protest and blockade of 2022. The two men are also charged with unlawful possession of a firearm for a purpose dangerous to the public peace. They're also both charged with mischief over $5,000. Anthony Olenek is being charged with unlawful possession of an explosive device for a purpose dangerous to the public peace. Just like the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa, the 2022 Coots protest and blockade was a civilly disobedient and peaceful demonstration against this massive apparatus of surveillance and control imposed by all levels of government and marketed to us as some sort of public health measure to reduce COVID-19 transmission. The Crown introduced many photographs and physical exhibits during proceedings today during its questioning of its witness, RCMP Constable Daniel Sauve. These included photographs of firearms and videos of firearms and also some tactical vests and bandoliers that can be used to carry ammunition. The bandoliers and tactical vests were also brought physically into the courtroom and will be able to be examined by the jurors when they retire to their jury room. The RCMP executed a search warrant upon a modular home and two trailers. One of those trailers owned by Anthony Olenek on February 13th, 2022, late at night and leading into the early morning hours of February 14th, which was the last day of the Coots protest and blockade before it was forcefully put down by law enforcement. Several RCMP officers invited by the Crown to testify as witnesses in this trial stated that when executing this search warrant on these properties, they observed several firearms and ammunition. They also stated that they saw these tactical vests which can be used to carry ammunition and also bandoliers that could be used for the same purpose. This includes RCMP Sergeant Daniel Sauve, who was the focus of proceedings today. While being cross-examined by Catherine Bayak, the defense attorney representing Chris Carber, Sauve acknowledged that items of interest, particularly firearms and ammunition, were seen in different places in the modular home and trailer in different photographs taken by the RCMP. And the question that Bayak was asking was how is this discrepancy explained? Why are these items seen in some positions in some photos and other positions in other photos? I'm here with Rob. Rob, you're a Lethbridge resident? I am. So Rob, you were sharing a remark with me earlier contrasting the 850 something days remand of Chris Carver and Anthony Olenek with other things that you've heard about? Yes, it just seems really wild in this country that somebody could be held in remand for that long for accusations and not get time out when I've heard of many other worse crimes where they're out in short order on bail. But for these guys to be locked up for this long over what happened, I, to me, that's just, like, that's horrible. Yeah, How can that happen in Canada? Where's the presumption of innocence, right? Exactly. So I'm here with, let's call them concerned citizens, interested Canadians, courtroom observers. I'm here with Andy, also Sean. Andy, let's talk about today's testimony. We have this RCMP officer. His name is Greg Suave. He was sort of responsible for photographing and taking some video, aggregating these uh, pieces of evidence, the exhibits. What about his testimony was noteworthy and jumped out of you today? Well, what jumped out of me was the fact of the amount of uh, items that they have seized, but that there was only two men sitting in the penalty box. They they've had three vests, but once again, there's only two men sitting in there. 
um, they don't have they haven't seemed to made any kind of connection that these items actually belong to anybody uh, at all. They just seem to be piling, looking like they want to pile evidence on this to give the impression that there's a conspiracy, which they've not been able to prove at all. And if there was a conspiracy, then where's everybody else that was involved in the conspiracy? Um, it, that's what jumped out at me, was that, uh, they're, that they're piling things on and there's no backup to it. As far as the actual trial itself, why does it matter? What is important about this trial that Canadians should care about? About our freedoms, about what we can say and what we, what, we, what we can express, and do justice. Like, is it justice for these men to be behind bars for this long, for, for what happened? No, I, I don't believe it is whatsoever. Like it's, oh, sorry, I'm interrupting. You should be able to peacefully assemble, peacefully protest, no matter what. With a, no matter what your protest is, you should be able to do it. And to be able to peacefully protest and then to target certain people and put them in jail for as long as they've been in jail without a chance of parole or bail, that's, that's just phenomenal how they could do that. There's guns that are there that are like a coyote gun, like 22s and so forth. You're not going to use those to, in, a, in a, an attempt to injure humans. You're going to use those to shoot gophers or coyotes or whatever. And, and there was guns there that were replica, like done up to look like um, maybe something that was more intense than it was, but it was still a 22. Like, and, you know, if you went to the average home of somebody in southern Alberta as a hunter, they might have all these rounds of ammunition because we do that. We, you know, we buy them and we store them. Yeah, basically, uh, gun ownership is not uncommon out here. No, gun ownership is not uncommon at all. I mean, you could, as, as we've heard, there's thousands of rounds. Yeah, there's probably thousands of rounds in the whole of southern Alberta. While being cross-examined by Catherine Bayak, RCMP Constable Daniel Sobe acknowledged in his testimony that a female colleague of his who was part of this search warrant execution on the modular home was photographed eating pizza inside the modular home during the search of this property. He stated that this was incompatible with best practices, his term, applied by the RCMP in these contexts. He stated that he did not eat the pizza because doing so would, again, not really be the best look. Now, Sean, what about you? What about the testimony from this police officer was noteworthy that caught your eye? It wasn't credible. It was not credible at, uh, testimony, in my opinion. If you look at a lot of the evidence that was uh, brought forward today, there was time periods where it was unaccounted for where the evidence was, uh, whether multiple people touched the evidence. Uh, they were talking about the photographer, uh, you know, when they, when they did the press release, and they couldn't tell us whether how many people touched that evidence or not, which, which destroys the integrity of the evidence, in my opinion. And so we want to make sure that this, this trial is done truthfully and that these men are tried truthfully. And, and I have questions about that, and everybody else should have questions about that that was in that courtroom today. So let's go a little bit on that. Let's go on a 30,000-foot view, broad picture. Why is this trial important? Why should Canadians care about what's going on here in Lethbridge, Alberta? Because it affects all of us. It's all of our freedoms. It's our right and freedoms. It's lawful in Canada to protest against, against government mandates and government tyranny. Just like, just like 60,000, 100,000, 200,000 Canadians that stood for our rights and freedoms. Uh, we have to stand for what's right. We have to stand for what we believe in. Otherwise, we'll lose our rights and freedoms. Andy, what about you? Do you think there are some bigger issues at stake at play in this trial? Well, I think it's very clear that their message that they're trying to send to all of us is don't stand up against the government. Don't oppose what the government wants to do because we'll make you pay the penalty. The, to, to me, the penalty is not necessarily what's going to come out of this trial. It's the fact that these guys have been in jail for 855 days or whatever it's been now. I've lost track of the days, but they've been in remand, not just in jail, but in remand. Um, they, haven't, they haven't received the decent human rights that most of us receive. Um, you know, we could go on for hours about the things that have been taken away from them, the things that have, they've lost in this process. That, to me, is the huge message out there is, you know, you better be careful of what you say because the government is watching. Dear Rebel News audience, if you value this original journalism, if you think this trial is worth reporting on and has deep importance to Canadians, please remember that we have operational costs to do this project. I've got to come out here from Ottawa, airfare, Airbnb, car rental, consumables. Your donations allow us to do that. So please help us out. Visit truckertrial.com. 
Contribute what you can. Stay up to date with our ongoing coverage.